Hello, beautiful souls. Today on the podcast, we have Elle who came to my half day retreat. And during the transmission and the energy work, um, when I was working on her pineal gland, she had a radical third eye (laughs) activation, um, which she talks about in this episode. And from that activation and the intention setting and the healing we did on this half day retreat, she manifested five aligned job opportunities, which was her intention um, to get one. Five came in the most miraculous ways, which you'll hear about in the episode. I just want to let you know that we have early bird spots open right now for my first four day retreat. So if you think this story is inspiring, from a half day retreat, imagine the miracles that will take place and the healing that will take place during this four day retreat. It's all inclusive. It's on a powerful vortex. The ley lines of the island that we are going to and specifically the yurt at the resort is a very, very powerful portal. Everything's included. We have a renowned chef who puts so much love into the food. The food is medicine. She puts a very high frequency into it. It's organic and locally sourced. And I am beyond excited. So from the other stories you've heard on this podcast, from healing eyesight to manifesting partners to manifesting jobs or money, opportunities, trips to Greece, Italy, all the beautiful things like this retreat is going to be the most transformative thing that I've ever facilitated. I am, I cannot tell you how excited I am. It will sell out. So if you are interested, DM me on social media, early bird retreat. A couple of the spots are already gone and we don't have the landing page yet. So I'm happy to answer any questions. I needed to launch this before the landing page was ready because I've just been too excited and people have been asking. So DM me at Jill Alana Nixon on Instagram or on Facebook, Early Bird Retreat, and I'll get you those links. There's a pay in full option and there's a pay over six month option in 12 payments. So whichever is best for you and we'll lock down that early bird rate and secure your spot. I love you so much. I hope this story inspires you. Remember what is possible for you is possible for all. And these transformations happen from the deep healing and the frequency work that I facilitate. Um, There's been so many miracles. I have hundreds of testimonials from this work. And that's what I see for you. You having your miracles and your healing and your relationships and your manifesting and your abundance in whatever area of your life or all areas of life that you desire. So take this as inspiration. And I know sometimes it can be like, oh, it's possible for them, but it's not possible for me. There is no person on this planet that is so unique that these tools don't work for them. These tools work for all of us, but we have to be the ones to choose to step in. I love you so much, beautiful soul. And without further ado, let's go to the episode. Hi. (laughs) Thank you for joining me today. I'm excited to be here. Awesome. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. Good, good. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. (laughs) Had some technical difficulties, as you know, but we figured it out. Um, Yeah, so I was just telling everybody that we're going to talk about your third eye awakening or opening and what happened during that and then Mm -hmm. as a result of that. So I would love to start, if you could tell the story of when I was doing the activation um, and creating the vortex in the root container that we were in, what happened then? And then we'll go into what came as a result of it. It, Yeah, so um, this happened on last Sunday Mm -hmm. uh, where we were doing that um, meditation retreat at your uh, building. Yeah. Uh, with you and um, was it Danny? And yeah. so it was interesting because I guess leading up to it, I did feel like a sensitivity in like the third eye area. Yeah. And I think that might have been from the previous sessions that I've done with you. Um, but yeah, leading up to it um, on Sunday, 
we were all doing the manifestation meditation and uh, Jill being the amazing person that she is, she was like going around and, and doing her magic. And the moment she came over to, like she was hovering around uh, my head area and she put her hand on my forehead. Uh, literally at that moment, um, she opened my third eye. And with that, I just saw this like, I don't even know how to describe it because it's so surreal. It was literally like a, a shining beaming white light coming through. And then this like a spectrum of colors that I can't even explain because I've never seen them before, just like coming through. And it was just, it sent like chills down my spine. It was so interesting. And um, yeah, and then that was that like. <laughs> May I stop for a moment? Just to yeah. Okay, so guys, what she's talking about is I was creating a vortex. Well, we were all creating a vortex. I was dropping connections and there was a vortex being created with all the energy. We were raising the energy of the room. If you study Dr. Joe's stuff, um, you'll know what I mean by that. Or if you study frequencies, we were raising it to higher frequencies. And then I was going around and doing a shamanic activation on each person, putting my thumb here and like, the I can't do it on myself, but the hands go down and then I realign the chakras going down white bringing the white light realigning them and then going right back up and then around and creating like an energy field around their body um I did not open your third eye I helped activate it you opened it because you were ready which we'll get into in a second so guys remember the magic is always within you so I helped guide you there I helped facilitate but you chose and I also want to talk about how you almost didn't come because it's a key imp component because so many people, I see it all the time with friends, with clients, with people in this work, like right before their biggest breakthroughs or like right before a breakthrough because they never end, let's be honest. They'll like, their subconscious will be like, oh, I can't do it for like all these other reasons, which are like actual bullshit. They could be legit reasons, but they're just bullshit. And your subconscious trying to keep you stuck and small. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the lights that she was seeing, the, it's like a fractal pattern. Again, Dr. Joe talks about this. It's sacred geometry. So I've seen a lot of people, I've seen these in a number of meditations um, and I've seen a lot of people literally so what happens when you do those is it's frequencies coming into the body, higher level frequencies. And it is um, literally like upgrading your DNA. It's a DNA upgrade. And right after these happen, it's always a big shift. You never really know what it is, but it's a like literally a biological upgrade. So this happened one of the times was when I was blind. I wasn't blind. I was going blind, apparently, according to like, the medical system um, and one of my eyes and my intention for this specific retreat that I was at was to heal my eye. And I saw these a number of times and got the upgrades and I healed my eye and no, I'm not blind. Um, I've seen another guy, actually, it was really interesting. So synchronicity at that same retreat, he had really, really bad eyesight. He was almost legally blind. And again, he saw fractal patterns and he has almost perfect eyesight now. Um, I've seen people not be able to walk and then see these fractal patterns and then all of a sudden they can walk again and they haven't been able to in years. So like when these things happen, you just know that you got a biological upgrade, but sometimes in the moment, you don't know what that is. Um, so let's continue. So you saw these fractal patterns and light and you told me after and you told me that you felt heat. Yeah. I tried... I, hopefully explain to you um that you got an upgrade and we didn't really know what was going to happen but I knew your third eye was opening and then I'll let you finish the rest so you yeah did you want me to start from um how I got into the session like before like what was happening oh because you mentioned that you wanted me to tell you um like tell the audience how I came to the session because that wasn't going to happen yes Yes. 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 I so, was going to save it for the end because of what oh. manifested after the session, which is all like why you didn't come. Okay. Yeah. Let's so save it for want, the end. We'll save it for the we'll end. We'll save it for the end. Uh, so stay tuned, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So after. Hey, Patrick. The, 
My super cool <laughs> cousin's here who I haven't talked to forever. Hi. <laughs> Stephanie <laughs> Beth is today. <laughs> Um, okay, so well. yeah, after the session, um, I was also doing pri a couple days prior and then also after, um, I'm still doing it now is listening to Jill's, um, audio of manifestation, like man abundance manifestation activation. And, um, so I was listening to that after my third eye being activated and it was really interesting because. I was really feeling in my power finally, and I was finally believing the things that I said. So one of the things that I was saying is that I would like a $60,000 salary job come into my life and it will show up by June 1st, 2022. Literally. So what was happening before then, by the way, before this last, the week before, I literally was having a horrible time looking for a new job because I'm trying to look for a new job. And at the same time, every time I was going through different options that were available, they did not interest me or they were not the right amount. And I just did not feel any connection to it whatsoever. And I was so tired of finding jobs that would align with me that I just said to myself, I want the job that I like, I want the job to come to me that will align with what I want. Yeah. And, and then with after, J yes. <laughs> Pardon me for stopping again. That's mm -hmm. so key because you could have taken those jobs that were so out of alignment and like pain yeah. you wanted, but you trusted your intuition and your body. So good for you because this is a huge Absolutely. step. Like when I met you, you're starting to really trust and trust your power. And that's freaking awesome. Please continue. <laughs> yes, no problem. Yeah. Like just really if it doesn't align with what I want, I did not want it anymore. I did not want it showing in my life. I did not want to attract things that I did not want anymore. I only wanted things that would align with my higher purpose, with just um, things that would make me feel good. I did not want to align with things that, I did not want to attract any negativity. Um, so yeah, with that said, I decided to do the session. And then after the session, uh, the funniest thing happened because I just, the next day I put my resume online on Indeed and just like, just to see like on public, just to see what would be a like who's looking for me, you know, cause I'm a good candidate. That's what I'm firmly believing now. And literally on Tuesday. So two days after Sunday session, I started getting these job offers that were like $60,000 salaries. And I couldn't believe Bye. it because... <laughs> She just put her profile public. She trusted yeah. that find this this job will find her. This is manifestation at its finest. See how powerful you are. Okay, sorry. Please continue. <laughs> yeah, no, that was that was pretty much it. Like I just um, was finally believing my worth, and it started arriving, like showing up instantly. The moment you believe your worth, the moment you believe in your own power. Uh, you start attracting things that will align with you. Like mm. things would want you. You're no longer chasing what you want. Like it's now chasing me, you know, like I wanted yes. this job. Yeah. And now it's here. Exactly. And it's an evolution. Like the more we just choose ourselves, And that was a conversation Elle and I had, which we'll tie back into it before. Cause she almost didn't come because she felt like she didn't have the finances because she didn't have a job at that point. This is the time, guys, when you need this work or you don't need it, but it's the time that it's going to be most beneficial because you're at a point where there's a clearing. You're like, okay, don't have this thing, but oh, like, should I invest? And I know it's hard, guys. Like, trust me, I invested in myself a lot last year. And last year I was not really making a lot of money. This year, so much has shifted because I chose to invest in myself. But I had to trust, okay, I'm going to trust myself. I don't know where the money's going to come from. I don't, ha I didn't have a lot of cash flow. Like, same thing for Elle. She wasn't at her old job, which was not in alignment. So that's good um, that she's not there anymore. And there was such an opening and I could see it. I didn't tell her at the time, but I basically, we had a conversation and I'm like, you got to choose yourself. Like you, you really got to choose yourself. And when you do that, things will come. And then all these opportunities came. I would love to hear your perspective on it too, but 
can we also bring up the goddess? Are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, actually, and then I wanted to tell you um, what I really saw in that. Like, I f think I finally got the message. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so just like a couple nights ago, I was again doing Jill's audio uh, of the Abundance Manifestation Masterclass. And um, my third eye was extra tingly that night. And then there's in this one section, like, you know, she does the thing where um, she'll say to for us to have a red, like red beam going down to ground us and a white beam going up um, into like into the universe. And then yeah, and then th for the third eye to have a purple beam to go beyond and to look for the, the the version of us that we have like the version of us that would have hadn't like had gotten the manifestation happen Sorry. and that had already achieved and that was the weird part because when I was shooting the white the purple beam out into the universe I did not get a version of myself I actually saw a glimpse of something else. So it was like this weird, it was so weird because as that was going into the universe, I saw a vision of this goddess mm -hmm. in a, like a garden, like a forest. And she was staring back at me and she was kind of like smiling in like a weird, like, you know, mischievous kind of way, like just smiling. And I kind of got freaked out because my, my third eye was so sensitive and then I started getting, um, my core started vibrating at a weird frequency. And it was just like, um, it just did not feel right. And I started freaking out because I was not used to holding so much energy in me. Um, and I, I don't know, even know what to call it. Maybe Jake, Jill can explain it after. But yeah, after that, I just like, I had to stop the meditation. I had to call, like, I had to contact Jill right, I'm like, right away. I'm like, I had to stop this because I just saw this, like, a higher being I don't even know who she is and it just freaked me out and now like my body is just like shaking and like my third eye is just extra tingly and it was just like yeah like how can I control it and then Jill was helping me with that yeah so again what happened in that um on Sunday is her third eye got open when she saw the fractal pattern she was in this she's, it's like you're in the stars almost and it's called clairvoyance we there's four Errors. So there's one where we hear things, we feel things on a deep level, an intuitive knowing, and the one where we see things. I believe so strongly we all have at least one. I also believe that most of us have all of them, two different degrees, different levels. And when we are ready, and only when we are ready, will they unlock. And sometimes it's still scary, but we are still ready. If it unlocks, we are ready. So Elle unlocked her clairvoyance. So now she's able to tap into different realms and use this to communicate with them for her highest good and get guidance when she wants it. So the reason she had to stop it was because now we've created, we did hands-on healing for everybody in healing circles, individualized, and we released trauma, samskara, stuck energy that were keeping her vibrating at a lower frequency. Um, so if you look at the chart of vibration, again, this is science, guys, this can be measured. The lower frequencies such as fear, which is a lot of right now in the collective, guilt, shame, um, lust, like these lower frequencies, blame, vibrate slower. And most of us, because of the constructs and the way we're brought up and the way the system is right now, um, or has been for the most part, puts us in these lower frequencies. It essentially brainwashes us to live in these lower frequencies. So it's nothing wrong with it. And I believe there will always be some like layers upon layers. So like, we're never gonna be always in bliss or love or peace ever. I believe in our human form, um, maybe once we transcend. That being said, we want to vibrate higher as often and as much as possible. So once we clear out the stuck energy that's keeping us more so in the lower frequencies, our bodies have space now to bring in the higher frequencies. This is when you can manifest, thus what she got, these job offers, um, much quicker. And to things that are equivalent with your now energy body. 
Um, and the more, like once the stuck energy is released, it's released forever. That being said, mm -hmm. because the process is complete, there's layers upon layers, which is why sometimes you'll like be feeling like really good. And then, oh, a fear comes up. The fear is just another layer of it. And it's another layer of stuck energy. So it's not to be afraid like you're going backwards ever because we're not. Once it's out, it's out. Um, but because she, we did so much clearing and Al was ready, she chose to, she actually did the clearing. We just held the space and channeled the energy. Again, key point, Elle did the work. She's been doing this work for a while. She chose herself. I didn't choose her. I guided her there. I tried to let, help her see another paradigm. She chose it. She manifested these jobs. Yes. Danny and I definitely helped facilitate and she did the work, um, which I think is a key component for anybody who like works with clients. It's like, it's never the healer. I don't even like that word uh, because I believe people heal themselves or the, the coach who is doing it. They are helping, they're giving tools, they're facilitating, they're holding space, whatever the other person needs. But the, the client, the whoever, I also don't really like the word client. That's another thing. I don't like this hierarchy, but the person that they're facilitating for, that they are doing the work. The facilitator is not doing the work. They're doing their work, but the power is always with somebody. And if you're ever working with somebody who says you need them to X, like run, because it's always within you. They can help you get there, absolutely. You don't need to rely on them and it's dangerous to rely on them. And I've been stuck there and it's not cool. Um, anyway, so I'm not stuck there anymore, but I was. So anyways, her body was convulsing because it was releasing the energy, like even more stuck energy that was right to be released so she can bring in higher frequencies so she can manifest the job she wants, the life she wants, all of these things that are now in line with her vibration. The thing is, it's very hard on the nervous system often um, because we're not used to vibrating this high, like in love, peace, joy, abundance, freedom, bliss, ecstasy for extended periods of time. And sometimes people have like never been there. So the body's kind of like, how do I stable and anchor this? So what I told Al is that's okay that you couldn't finish it. This is what's going on. Um, and you can just request that it happen with ease and grace. Take a couple of days off if you need from the activation. Request that happen, the shifts happen with ease and grace, and not to overburden the um, the nervous system. So we always have the option when you're doing this work, when you're listening to an activation, if you're meditating, whatever, to just request that so it's not so intense. Um, also. So she saw this being, this goddess, because her third eye is unlocked and she's clairvoyant, which is one of her gifts. And sometimes when that stuff happens, it can be scary. I got super, super scared when that happened to me. Um, I used to see things as a child, shut it off for a long time, so shamed about it and told I was crazy and blah, blah, blah. Unlocked at a retreat like mad and I was freaking terrified. And then I had to I shut it off again for a bit and then it came back and I learned to control it. Meaning it's so simple. You choose when it opens and you choose when it closes. So when I go into sessions with people, unless I'm not channeling, um, but if I am channeling, I will ask for it to be opened or in certain meditations, I'll ask for it to be open. And certain times I don't want to see beans. I don't want to see messages. I just want to sleep or I want to do a relaxing meditation. So I simply ask with potent energy, not please don't, not as a victim, as a victor. I need to sleep. Please do not visit me tonight. And it's so simple because sometimes it's like, I, I don't want to see that, you know? And then we have the option of opening it. And it's such a simple but potent request. So that's what I told Al. We haven't really talked since. Um, but you said you got the message. So... You yeah. Well, I think like, um, what I realized during the audio sessions is that in all the versions that I saw myself, um, the, the one that had achieved the $60,000 salary job mm -hmm. and like, how, how do we feel and where we are? Like, who are we surrounded by? 
And I notice I'm always like in most of them, I'm really relaxed and I'm always somehow outdoors and just enjoying. I didn't notice at the time because they were always different places, Mm -hmm. but I realized like it really came to me one, one night when I saw that I was in like this retreat, like a, like a nice uh, beach retreat. And I just realized like, I think, the the goddess was telling me to like really connect with mother nature yeah. to um because like she was in the garden herself like that like you know so yeah I, was, I realized my focus needs to change a little bit is that I'm not just getting a sixty thousand dollar salary job I'm actually just getting like you said a sixty thousand dollar income which can come up in different ways. And yep. with that, I really need to allow my body to heal because there's a lot of things I need to heal from. And then to also connect with mother nature. I just yeah. That's beautiful. Mother yeah. nature is one of my best teachers. We spent in my training in Sedona a lot of time doing land journeys and studying plants. And I'm like, what is plants going to teach me? Oh, it taught me a lot. And it still does. And it's beautiful because... A mother nature never lies. Um, and there's so many lessons and it's all mm-hmm. like you saw sacred geometry. If you look in nature, everything's sacred. Like it's all sacred geometry. All, all flowers are in Fib- Fibonacci numbers. So like each petal, like they're all the rounds. If you go to every single flower or every single like pineapple or any, every single, um, pine cone I have one there I'm like what is it called they all are Fibonacci numbers it's sacred geometry these are patterns and we can learn so much from them and from like just look at the I'm sorry but just I don't know what I'm saying sorry look at how beautiful that is too so much of the time we get so caught up in all this like BS and think we need like 10,000 medications when we just need to ground and go outside and breathe and be surrounded by mother Gaia, mother nature and feel the support of that. And like Mm -hmm. that in itself is so healing. And I love that you said, yeah, like the salary thing, because we were talking after it's like, I got these job offers. Um, and she told, I didn't know before what she was trying to manifest or call in. Um, I was pretty sure it was in line with a job. And I said, I I could see from the outside perspective that Elle was limiting herself because I am all about alignment. And like so often I've been going deep into the energetics of abundance and money recently and rewriting my own beliefs and patterns so I can hold more, so I can serve more. Um, And so much of the time especially with a lot of people's upbringings it's like oh I got to get this job and then this promotion and then this and then three years later this other promotion and we put ourselves in such a freaking box and I see this with clients it's like I got to get this one sale or like I have to get this promotion or I have to get this investor I'm like well what if there's 10 other investors what if that's not the right investor and the reason that one fell through is because there's 10 other way better investors and then they let that go and then like three other ones show up that are way more in alignment or like another sale goes through that's like triple the price at like all the time and I'm even seeing it for myself the ways like I block money or abundance or opportunity because I think it needs to be a b c d e when there's actually infinite possibilities and when we surrender and trust this is why I don't chase clients like people are like how do you get clients like I'm like I literally manifest them and I trust that the right ones will come to me. And every single time I set a new boundary and a new standard, the caliber of my client changes Mm -hmm. or, or they change in my presence, in the interactions with them without me even saying anything. It happened today. It literally happened today with someone. And I was like, Whoa, because I spent last night journaling and I rewrote my standards of certain things. And like, like that, because I changed energetically, they interacted with me differently, even though I didn't say anything to them about it. 
and this is how it works. So like basically what I was telling Al or trying, not telling her, but trying to see from like, let her see, hold up, does it need to be a salary job or can it be $60,000 of income for a year? Because there's so many options. Like it doesn't need to be a salary job. We're just so brainwashed to that. Or it doesn't need to be this much in sales. Like what if, she could find something doing what she loved and like working for herself or like getting gifted this money or like, you know, whatever is most in alignment for her. And I don't know that. I don't know that. She knows that. And only her. All I can do as a facilitator is help her see what's best for her. And this is another, I was not going to talk about this, but I think it's really important. Another common thing I see in the coaching industry or the healing industry is like, you should do this. I'm sorry, but F that shit. Every single time I was told what to do or what not to do or what's good and bad, guess what? I didn't do the thing that probably was good for me. And nobody else knew what was best for me other than me and my divine guidance. And that is something I think it's super important to keep in mind is like, if you are working with somebody, just be conscious. Are they telling me what to do? Or are they guiding me to see what's best for me? Because they, nobody knows what's best for you other than you. The shame and the guilt around doing bad things is worse than actually ever doing the bad thing that we're, we are deeming as bad with our beliefs. And people only shift when they see another option for themselves or they see where they're harming themselves. And any facilitator's job is only to help them see what's best for them, not tell them, not shame them, not guilt them, not make a decision for them. Could I also add, I feel like that's yeah. also in a way like uh, limiting yourself as well, because if, if they're telling you what to do, it's like you have to do A and B in order to get to C. And it's like, no, because yeah. abundance is, it can happen xyz abc anywhere like yeah it does not have to come in one way and for them to guide you is it's almost like you know it's it's also coming from a place of lack too like there's only one way to get there and if you can't do that then it's like there's no absolutely yeah there's no other way you know girl you got and, it you got it it's like we are only in lack or abundance at one moment in time. Like you cannot, you physically can't be in both. You energetically cannot be in both. In your mind, in your thoughts, in your belief, you cannot be in both. And if it's like this one way, that is such a lack mentality or this one person or this one client, like, or this one job, this one stream of income. No, 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 no. And guys, I'm learning this too. It's like, oh, that's lack. What if there was a, an, a, infinite amount of other possibilities which there is yep what could you do from there and this is when people get greedy and competitive and whatever when they're in a lack mentality the wealthiest people i know live in abundance and by that i mean they are not competitive they're like they don't do drama they're the kindest people ever they're very boundaried for sure with their energy their time all of the things and they live in abundance. They don't live in the fear of losing what they've created because they know they are abundant. And it's such, it seems like counterintuitive, but it's like the world of difference. And yeah, anyways, I'm just, I'm so proud of you. Do you want to share um, what your thought process was before you chose to come on Sunday? And you don't have to. It's totally up to you. Oh, no, for sure. I'll share it. Like, so because I was looking for a new job, um, I was kind of low on money, you know, mm -hmm. because I, I, I only had this one source of income, which is from a job. Mm -hmm. And I was starting to go into a place of lack. So it kept showing up in my life because I was thinking, oh, I'm limited to the amount of money I have in my bank you know, and that mm -hmm. it was going to be hard to show up in other ways. Um, and then Jill had, um, she has a couple of other in-person sessions coming up 
And I was going to do one of them in June. Um, but then she asked if I wanted to do the one in May. So I messaged her and I said, hey, I can only do one because, um, and actually the one for Sunday, the one that passed was more than the one in June. And I said, mm -hmm. well, I do want to invest in myself. I said to myself, I want to invest myself. I know this works. So, and I love all of Jill's sessions. Like they're Thank always you. amazing. If you guys ever have a chance, please do go to her sessions. Just any one of them is it's going to be worth it. Just trust me. If don't, like, don't trust me. Like, just trust yourself. Like, you know, just, oh, I love you. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> and yeah, with that, I told her I can only do one. And actually at that point, I barely had any money in my bank account. I had another bank that was more for like a, a life savings. And I decided that I was going to take money out of my life savings because no matter what, whether I go to the one in June or the one in May, I knew I was going to take something out to go to one of those sessions because I know it's going to be changing my, it's going to be like life changing for me. Mm -hmm. And as Jill would say, it's, you're making an investment for yourself. So and, I asked. And choosing, what are you choosing? I'm choosing myself. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I choose me. And yeah, with that said, I, you know, I messaged her and then she said, yes, like, just come to the one on Sunday, uh, make it work and make an investment in yourself. And so I did that. And I, yeah, I, like, I have no regrets. I don't even care that I'm, you know, like, using the money that I don't have, because in the end, I know it will come back to me in other ways. And it already has, you know, like, things are showing up for me. Um, actually, even like, the fact that I'm low in income, but somehow, like, I'm so well treated by people around me. Like, there's so much abundance. And like, she, like Jill said, it doesn't just show up in salary. It can, it can yeah. show up in love. It can show up in like, you know, someone, a, a friend treating you for lunch. Um, 100%. It can show up as like, you know, your, your parents just randomly wanting to give you money just because, you know, like. Yeah. And we negate these things, but we draw them to us. Like we do. And, and the moment you believe in yourself that you are loved, you are care. And, and for you to love yourself, that's the most important part. Because we are strongest when we love ourselves. Because that's when Absolutely. we raise our worth the most. You know, like I didn't think that the most, I'm going to be honest with you. The most I saw myself, like I ever physically see myself get was like 40 something thousand uh, dollars a year income and yeah. I didn't even know how I was going to race to a higher point and I actually really didn't know I, I knew I wanted a new job I didn't know what career I wanted to go into and I was open like I did not want to limit myself to how I was going to get a job I just knew that like the amount I wanted to make and then it just started showing up all these sixty thousand dollar salary job just started showing up like out of the blue like just like that. Like they came looking for me, you know, I yeah. didn't apply to any of these jobs. They just saw my resume. They're like, Hey, we think you're a good fit. Do you want yeah. to um, like apply for this job? And I was like, yes, like, this is amazing. It's showing up in physical reality. Like yes. now it's physical proof. I am worth this much per year, you know, like, and I'm going to go beyond that because especially good. with the message that I got from this goddess, like yeah. uh, it's, it's evolving from there. And so, yeah, I'm just, I'm truly excited for, I am for what's to come. <laughs> so excited for you. And like the fact that you also proved that to yourself, it's like you shifted, you, you, you released, you raised your vibration after choosing yourself and investing in yourself. And these things showed up without you even applying. Even if you don't take any of those $60,000 jobs, you have data in 3D reality of the power of this work and of the power of yourself. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you can just raise it when you choose to, when it feels comfortable and you can anchor it down. It's like, okay, maybe I'll, maybe I'll go for 70,000. Maybe I'll go for 80,000. And that's how it works because it's no different to manifest 3 million than it is $60,000. The difference is only in our mind and our self-worth and being able to hold that like we talked about and strengthen the nervous system to hold that, which is why it's like, okay, so you jumped to here 
and then okay like let's recalibrate let's anchor let's hold it for a while okay okay now it feels stable i can hold this i think i can hold more and then you can go more and this doesn't just work for money like it's like for everything for opportunities for relationships for for experiences for places to stay guys i can't tell you how many freaking places to stay like house sitting places and fucking mansions i manifested i was homeless for two hours when i was gone on my travels like it was insane or like even in costa rica 600 dollar place that was usually like three grand it was amazing um but like this is it like so don't I see so many people just tying abundance to like this X dollar amount, which is really opened my eyes in the last little bit because the market is very down. And I, it was the, I was doing taxes full disclosure yesterday and I haven't been looking at my investment accounts because like I knew what was going on with the market and I got assigned to pull my TFSA in October and I did and then I reinvested it right before the market went down and down and down and down and I just kept watching it go down and I was having anxiety attacks and yesterday was the first time I've looked at that investment account in a while and it is a lot more down than it was a few months ago and I laughed because I realized holy shit firstly like a, I had built my confidence in knowing I can bring it in again and more and more and more and more. We can always go up and up and up. I see this again, since we're talking about abundance. Um, oh, I think this is good for you to hear. I think I see a lot of entrepreneurs, like it's like they go up and then, and then they feel like they have to go down and then up and down. And I see this at all levels. Like one of my clients makes well into like the high millions and and it's, but it, it fluctuates so much. And I like dug into the belief and I'm like, do you believe it has to go up and down? And they did. So we shift it and then it can just go up and up and up. And this is an example of how our beliefs create our re reality. A, B, um, it's like we, our self-worth doesn't need to be tied to like all of these things because abundance comes in so many forms. And if we're just tying it to like one thing, like finances, investments, like what happens when the market crashes? What happens when we go into recession, which we are? Um, like during these times, it's like, oh, are we gonna die? And that's how I felt for a while until I worked through a lot of this and was like, whoa, I create my own happiness. I create my own abundance and I can just make more. Like, like that's it. It's- We, we never need to feel stuck unless we're putting it out there that we're feeling stuck, mm -hmm. then it's going to show up. It's like, exactly. you know, we're just as much as we put out. hundred percent. And then it's a lot of the time too. It's like, Oh, I'll, I'll invest in this when I have the thing. And it's like, no, no, you got it backwards. You got to invest in your, in the thing, which is an investment in yourself actually. And then mm -hmm. the other things come mm -hmm. and then you realize your power and then you create more abundance in whatever form, whether that's health, wealth, friendships, family, um, gifts, like, I don't know, whatever it is for you, whatever you want. And then you're like, oh, I get it. I am the creator of my own life. I just got to choose. I got to see the data. And I got to take the action, aligned action. But like, let's be honest. It's, I've said this to you so many times and you get it now, like, 80% energetic and 20% aligned action. How, like you took the aligned action of putting your profile on, on some, like not submitting it, putting it on the website and making it open. So you took action, but you weren't submitting it to like hundreds of people, which I know I've seen friends who are like, I have applied to a hundred jobs and like blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh God, you just don't get it. Like Once we are an energetic alignment to it, it's like the actions we need to take are so minuscule. And what because you're do, starting to attract, attract the things that align with you. Absolutely. absolutely. This, is, this is going to law of attraction, you know, like what you put out there is what you're attracting. I believe I can get this amount. I believe I can have this. 
I believe I am worthy of this, like whatever it is that shows yeah. up for you. The moment we're putting that out there, we're attracting because we believe we firmly believe that we already have it. And that's where the abundance come in is that, mm-hmm. and, and it goes to, you know, we really, really do have to give ourselves power. Like we have the power. Don't yeah. give your, your power and your energy to someone else. Like don't think about yeah. what other people want. Don't, don't, you know, use their expectation. Just what do you want for yourself? Like, what do you want that aligns with you? What makes you happy and truly happy? Not like, not don't be in the rat race. Don't be a sheep. Like don't be chasing someone else's dream, but what aligns with yeah. what feels good for you? Because that's going to be your true alignment. That's going to be what will come to you naturally. Absolutely. And I'd love to add, like when you make that choice and things fall out of your life, Mm-hmm. It's because you have transcended and those things are no longer in alignment. So let them go. And I talked about this on Sunday and one person had a job fall out of her life and it was so beautiful because we, we knew it wasn't in alignment like months ago and I was going to make her sick again if she stayed. And then source just took it out of her life. And I'm like, you're free now go create because you can create way more than that job was it was holding you back from what you want to bring in. And this is how like, this is how it works. And it can be scary. And it can be like, Oh, my God, gone through a lot of those a lot of ego dust, but it doesn't need to be it can be like, Oh, cool. Thanks, source. Thanks, universe for like, just doing that for me. I didn't even have to do anything. I didn't want to hang out with this friend. I knew they were taking me down, like, lowering my vibe. And now they're not in my life. Or like, like my job just fell out and I knew it was in alignment, but I didn't want to leave. I was like planning my escape for like months. Like, cool. You just got free. You're liberated. You're that powerful. <laughs> Holy man. You're that powerful. And I actually also wanted to add in regards to yeah. jobs is like, you know, when people start chasing jobs and they get rejected, like, you know how some people are applying for a hundred jobs, but like maybe they might only hear back from eight of them. And even then like, whether the job offer is gonna, sorry, hold on for one second. All good. Um, yeah, so when those jobs reject you, it's actually the universe doing you a favor because ultimately yeah. they're not gonna be aligned with what you want and they're ultimately not gonna make you happy. And that also is probably showing up because you know, as much as it might hurt to say this, but maybe you weren't feeling worthy enough. You were feeling yeah. like you have to chase this job. You have to please someone, please this um, boss that's going to give you money. It's like, what are we doing? Like chasing after this, um, like, what are we doing chasing after something? Because it should naturally just come to us and make us feel good. It's us like thinking we're not worthy. Us thinking like we have to, you know, please someone. And mm-hmm. that's, that's the point when it's does when it doesn't work. That's like when you're coming from a place of lack and it's like, we really cannot do that because yeah, like it, it's just more lack is going to show up if you're believing that lack is going to show up. And that might 100%. even not like, you might not even know, you might not even know that you're in, in the frequency of lack. It's like, you're just thinking in the back of your head, because sometimes it's like, it's, you're not even um, consciously thinking about it. It's because it's all yeah. subconscious, right? 100%. You know, we have a habit of thinking we're not worthy enough. And that's going to show up in different ways. Like, oh, a friend didn't show up for me. Like, oh, maybe, she, like, I'm not worthy enough. Oh, like, um, I don't, I'm not getting this job. I'm not getting this. Like, oh, like, this person looked at me weird on the street. Like, that's all just different ways of, of you not, uh, not giving yourself enough worth, you know? So, and, and it could be nothing to do with you, but it's just these stories we write. Yeah. It's yeah. like, our beliefs create a reality again and even there we it's a self-fulfilling prophecy we always prove our unconscious and subconscious beliefs correct so oh this person didn't show up they don't like me i'm unworthy verse and, and maybe like i don't know maybe like someone passed away maybe that emergency maybe had nothing to do with you the amount mm-hmm. of times people have told me jill i literally like one of my really good friends bless your soul when I left Canada and like was in the hospital the night before getting antibiotics because I couldn't see and I was supposed to give her my key but I had to rush to the the 
airport and so I gave it to somebody else she's like I was so angry and I I would like took it so personally like not even knowing the story behind it and it was just like oh well that's actually not what happened like I didn't have time because I was at the hospital and I had to catch my flight and like yada 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 so therefore but it's like if we have that belief we'll always prove it correct and then we'll create stories and then it'll like manifest into our jobs or our relationships it's like oh well f you like you hurt me like what but i like and we create these things that aren't even there and issues that aren't even there instead of being like oh well maybe it's something else and that's cool because like i create my own happiness and I am worthy, therefore I'm gonna use this time for something else. Or I'm not gonna take that job because I don't need to prove myself and I can viscerally feel it's not in alignment. Therefore, I'm going to choose my worth, choose my alignment above all else. And people will think what they think because they have, a lot of people have trauma and if they've released it, then they're just gonna be like, oh, it didn't work out. And if they didn't, they might lash out at you, but that's their own stuff. Like that's when enmeshment happens is when it's like, oh, you hurt me. Like, no, I didn't hurt you. Your emotions are to do with you. Maybe this situation triggered something within you. I'm not talking about being on ethical, mm -hmm. but I'm just saying we really, do control our emotions and once we take responsibility for that and we do create our lives we're literally unstoppable yeah actually i wanted yeah. to bring a story up um yes this happened to me on a trip from montreal to toronto a few years ago this is believe this is like way before i was on the spiritual path this was like maybe four years ago mm -hmm. and i was at a sort of low place in my life and what stuck out for me was that on this bus ride, it, I took the mega bus on the bus ride from Montreal to Toronto. And I chose one of those reserved seating on the front at the upper deck so that mm -hmm. I can sit at the front and no one's going to bother me. And uh, because it's reserved, not everyone is going to pay that extra few dollars to go sit in like yeah. reserved seatings. So this lady, this girl, uh, she, um, this lady, she comes, she sits next to me and mm -hmm. Like we were meant to be sitting next to each other because the things she was saying. So she's actually a manifestation coach as well. Oh, was super cool. Yeah. And it was, and it was funny because at first I thought she was a bit annoying because she was talking so loud and she was like talking to her clients. Like she had a client in, in Italy and she was, <laughs> she was telling him like, um, how this was the thing that stood out was that th there was at one point in this, in the conversation, she said, imagine yourself in the storm. You're in the eye of the storm mm -hmm. and in the eye of the storm, you know how there's like, um, it's pretty much like a tornado, you know? Yeah. Um, and in the eye of the storm, you're standing in the middle and in outside, like just like in front of you, all like 360 are mirrors. Mm -hmm. And with that, that's like, you are, you are the storm. Like, what you put out the the mirror is like it's looking back at you so yeah every everybody you meet is just a version of yourself so whether you you're liking that person or you're hating that person it's just there's certain things about them that you like because they resonate in you or there's certain things about them that you don't like because it's triggering you somehow but it's because there's that aspect of you that you don't like and is showing up outside absolutely absolutely it's like everything we hate about somebody else is in our shadow i literally often with one on one clients if they're having an issue with somebody in their life i'm like hey i want you to journal for five minutes everything no filter you hate about this person and then i mirror to them that it's actually a part of them they disown and we go back and we do inner child healing to start loving that part of themselves and that shadow and integrating it therefore it doesn't control them and they don't hate that person anymore. And it's like, people are like, whoa, what? I, this person used to piss me off so much. I despise them. And now I don't have a reaction because it was part of them that they hated. And now they'd love. And therefore, the outside doesn't 
doesn't trigger them anymore because they're not triggered within as so within as without. Okay, I'm gonna let you go in a minute, a few minutes here, but I would love for you to share. So we know and you know, moving forward, what the biggest lesson, the biggest gift um, that you learned from this experience, from these manifestations, from the third eye opening, from all of the things, from choosing yourself, the a nugget, a pearl that you're gonna take forward into your life, now experiencing this data? Um, I mean, there's no right or wrong answer to say this, but for me personally is to really allow the journey, to, like to really enjoy this journey and to allow it to take me where I need to go because mm -hmm. I'm no longer stuck to a certain view. I'm no longer uh, limiting myself to a certain path. I'm now yeah. allowing the openness of the universe. To, like I am literally just going where I need to go. I'm stepping into my power. I'm believing in my t intuition. I'm believing in myself and I'm just following that. And there's nothing else I need to do. I love that so much. Thank you so much for sharing it. And it's really synchronistic. I just have this book on what <laughs> alters the surrender experiment. It's all about that, about surrender to a higher source. Because you know, you, you now know in your body, the navigation system, what feels right and what doesn't feel right. And the more we follow what doesn't feel right, the more we abandon ourselves, and the more the lessons are going to be harder. And the more we step into what is right, what is in alignment, the more we'll be blessed with what our soul wants and our soul path and our soul journey and these mm -hmm. gifts. Yeah. Look, you exactly. took yourself, you invested, you, and then your gifts, one of your, one, because you have several of your gifts got unlocked. And now you have access to that always. And no one can take that away from you. It's a miracle. You're amazing. And it all, it all started with believing in myself. Yeah. <laughs> and and going, to, going to sessions that will help yeah. um, unlock those powers. <laughs> help. I love it. Help. Not to do it for you. No. But no. to help. Facilitate. Exactly. Okay. I love you so much. I'm so excited to see where your path takes you next. Thank you for you joining too. me and telling the story. Um, for anybody who thank you for having me. Well, <laughs> I love the woo. <laughs> Everyone embrace too. the woo. <laughs> I was so shy for so long because, like, when mine unlocked, I'm like, oh my god, I'm going crazy. Oh my goodness, I shouldn't say God. God, I love you. Um, Again, not religious, guys. Nothing against religion. Spiritual AF. I believe in a higher power. And sometimes I call it God. And sometimes I call it the universe or the divine or divine guidance, the infinite intelligence, whatever you want. Um, I just use interchangeable words, if you're wondering. But yeah, uh, I can't remember what I was saying. Thank you so much for joining, though. And the power is within you. And never forget that. And you're I'm so excited to see where your journey takes you next. And I'm so grateful to have experienced so much of your growth and your transition and you trusting and learning to trust and step into your power fully and embodying it, which is different because you knew a lot of this knowledge before. And the more you've chosen, yeah. the more you've started to embody it. Therefore, the more it appears in your 3D reality, not just in the quantum yes yeah exactly now you're starting to embody it and see and there's just so much more and i'm so excited for you <laughs> <laughs> okay anything else uh no but just sending you lots of love and blessings and thank you and to everyone I watching bless you all <laughs> yes bless you all thank you for watching thank you so much sister i love you i appreciate you i honor you for doing this work for choosing yourself and i will see you soon Mwah. bye, bye. <laughs> once again if you would like the early bird discount before the pre-launch for my first four-day in-person retreat heal to manifest to get results like this and even greater because of the amount of time we have together. DM me early bird retreat at Jillalana Nixon on Instagram 
or Facebook. That's Early Bird Retreat at Jill Alana Nixon on Instagram or Facebook, and I will send you the link. If you enjoyed this episode or if it brought you value, please consider writing a five-star review. We so appreciate it so that we can get this knowledge, this wisdom out to more people so that they can start to heal things in their life. They can start to manifest their desires from the inside out. Sending you so much love, so much light, and thanks for listening.